After five years as lean champion for Armstrong World Industries, I realized that my voice wasn't being heard as strongly as it had been from the beginning. I found it difficult to move leadership to the next steps in our lean journey. And much like Charlie Brown and his teacher, what they were hearing when I spoke was womp, 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 with a few lean terms sprinkled in for good measure. I realized that my voice by itself was not going to be strong enough to move us to the next level, and we needed an outside voice. Now, two years into our lean journey, we had an inside run lean assessment, and it was pretty tactical in nature as we were looking at the application of lean tools and principles to improve our processes. Now, I had the thought that I'd like to hold an, our second lean assessment, but this time focused on leadership and strategy. And with the backing of my boss, the Senior VP of Technology, we put that assessment together and gained commitment from his staff. Now, I knew we needed a very strong outside voice, and the one I could think of that would give us the strongest push was Mike, who was a consultant with Shingajitsu. Now, I had worked with Mike a few years before, and I realized that if I could somehow convince him to join us, he could help us move to that next level. Luckily, when I reached out to him, I had found out that he had pretty much retired from Shingajitsu, but worked about 12 weeks of the year. And he was very interested in coming to visit us and was willing to do it for free as he was curious about how we were doing in our journey and he was now doing basically whatever he wanted. Now, we covered his travel expenses and we were able to fly him out for that first day of our lean assessment. Now, we, we had a nice dinner with the leadership team and the staff and Mike joined us and our directors and, and managers were talking very, very proudly about the, their understanding of lean and the progress they had made in those first five years. But as Mike spoke with them and asked them questions, he very quickly and very respectfully exposed gaps in our processes in a way that was very eye-opening and a bit humbling. Now, over the next two days of the lean assessment, Mike and the rest of our assessment team met dozens of employees in our technology group and exposed many opportunities and alignment issues from the way leadership was applying lean. At the end of the assessment, we put together four major topics as opportunities for our lean journey. The first was learning starts at the top, meaning that leaders in our group had to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding of lean tools and principles so that they could give that type of support to their workers. The second was linkage, meaning that the work we did always had to link to what the customer was asking us to do for the business. The third was stability, meaning that we needed to smooth out the flow of work so we didn't have some major chaotic ups and downs like we were experiencing in our business. The fourth was cycle time and quality, meaning that we needed to make sure that we were producing knowledge and other work at the rate of requirement by our customer at the quality level expected. Now, although these, these four themes were nothing new to our leadership team, these were breakthroughs. The way they were spoken to them and the way they were discussed seemed to be something brand new. Now, it was hard for me because for the past five years, I had basically been saying the same thing. But what was really great was the way Mike and the rest of the team presented it. It helped our leaders renew their commitment. And over the next months and years, we made the next level breakthroughs and improvements in our processes. I hope this story provided you with some inspiration to revisit your own processes. I have a lot more I'd like to share. Head over to pi-partners.com to learn how I can help. And check back from time to time for more Kaizen stories.